I said 54a. There are two special classes of functions we should look at. One class of function is called an odd function, and another class of function is called an even function. And it's not like all functions are one or the other. Some are odd, some are even, some are neither. But uh, what are these things? Well, it has to do with symmetry. Symmetry over the coordinate axes. So let's take a look at this. What's an even function? An even function will have symmetry over the y-axis. So here's the y-axis. What it means is that if you have a point here, there's going to be a mirror image across the y-axis. It's like the y-axis is a mirror. If you have a point here, there's going to be a, uh, a mirror image across the y-axis. That's what it means to have even symmetry. It means you basically the y-axis is a mirror. Everything's reflected across the y-axis. Here's one that I think you can picture that in your mind already, the good old parabola. But let's just be uh, all nice and official and bang out a quick graph. Plug in negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And I'm pretty sure you have you know this. You take a negative 2, you square it, it's a 4. You take a negative 1, you square it, it's a 1. 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4. What does this thing look like? Well, you know, looks like a parabola. So you plug in, ooh, that's not good spacing. Okay, you plug in x equals negative 2, you got 4. Negative 1, you got 1. 0, you got 0. 1, you got 1. 2, you got 4. Okay. And just try to get in the habit of making it nice and sort of rounded there. Not too pointy on the parabola things. Put your arrows of continuation there. So it's obvious from the graph. You say, yeah, it's there's like a mirror here. It's like the y-axis is a mirror. Every point over here has a reflection over here and vice versa. Okay, That's what we mean by an even function. Now, do you suppose, remember we were looking in the last lesson at x squared and x to the fourth and x to the sixth, these monomial functions with even exponents, and they all basically had this similarish kind of shape, sort of like a field goal shape. Do you suppose that because these all have even exponents that that's why they call these even functions? I'm guessing. I don't know where the name came from, but I'm guessing. Now, you don't have to have an even exponent to count as an even function. Here's another one. Go away, you. Here's another one. This will be an even function. Watch. Let's plug in the same values. Do, 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 do. So you plug a negative 2 in here. It's inside the absolute value. What the absolute value bars do is strip the sign off to make it a 2. Then you add 3. It's a 5. Same thing happens to the negative 1. You strip the sign off. It's a 1. Plus 3 is a 4. 0 plus 3. 1 plus 3. 2 plus 3. Okay. So when you go graphing this thing, it's kind of up here a little ways. So when x is negative 2, I'm at 5. When x is negative 1, I'm at 4. 0, 3, 1, 4. Now these are pointy. When, when x is inside of absolute values, you're going to get these pointy kind of graphs. They're not parabolas, but they, they're similar, I suppose. Except, like I say, they're, this is like, this is going up at 45 degrees. This is going up at negative 45 degrees over this way. But you can definitely see it's like there's a mirror here. So this is another example of an even function. So this is what even means. You catching on here? Let's look at this one real quick like. Maybe not as quick as I was thinking because look at that thing. That thing is hideous. So let's just plug in the same values. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Now first let me uh, make a point here. A point that I like to make often is that whenever you're plugging into functions, you really should be good about using parentheses. So when I plug this x as a negative 2, I take the negative 2, put it in parentheses, put a fifth power on it. Minus 5, the negative 2 goes there cubed. Plus 4, the negative 2 goes there. Plus 3. Now what makes this important is that, like here, you're not just going to multiply those two negatives together because this negative has to first be cubed. It's going to end up not making a difference. But if this was, if let's say this was squared, this would go positive, and then you'd have a negative times up. It'd be, you know, it'd be a negative term here. Whereas if you just went negative times negative, you'd say, well, I thought it was positive. So what I'm saying is, use the parentheses, and then follow your order of operations to be careful. 
Negative 2 raised to the fifth power is negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 32 minus 5 times. A negative 2 cubed is a negative 8. I suppose this one we can just go ahead and say that's a negative 8 plus a 3. Negative 32, this is plus 40, minus 8 plus 3. And so what we end up getting here is a 3. Just a 3. Let me try to get rid of all this now. Boink. Okay, now let's not do that over and over. I'll just ask you to trust me, and if you don't trust me, you can check it yourself. It'd be a good exercise, really. But when I plug in negative 1 into this function, I also get 3. When I plug in 0, you can see that that goes away, that goes away, that goes away, and you also get 3. And when you plug in 1, you get 3, and when you plug in 2, you get 3. Well, that's a kind of a funky function, huh? So if I were to graph this thing, These are the points we've got so far. When x is negative 2, I'm at 3. When x is negative 1, I'm at 3. When x is 0, I'm at 3. I'm at 3. I'm at 3. What do you think? Is that looking like an even function to you? Well, if that was the whole function, in other words, if the function only consisted of those five points, nothing in between, no other points anywhere. If that was the whole function, then yeah, it would be an even function because this point is reflected over to here, this point is reflected over to here. It counts as an even function. This is not an even function. And I'll prove it to you pretty quickly because in the last section, remember we were graphing polynomial functions. And one of the things we did when we graphed polynomial functions is we asked about end behavior. So remember, this thing has end behavior that follows the lead term. In other words, as x goes to plus or minus infinity, this thing goes to uh, x to the fifth. It starts to look like x to the fifth, which is x to the fifth looks like this. So when you're out here or when you're out here, this is the end behavior you have which that's not even. This doesn't reflect over there. This doesn't reflect over there. This does not reflect across the y-axis. It's not even. This function has to do something like, you know, now I don't know what it does in here, zoo, 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 whatever, but it has, to, it has to do something like this. Not an even function. Okay, so I proved it to you just by asking you to consider the end behavior. But, but this, is a, this is an important point that I need to make. Now, I like this Yiddish proverb. I found this in a book of aphorisms. It says, for example, is not proof. In other words, it's important, very important, not to draw conclusions based on only a handful of points. And that's the danger that you might fall into if you say, hey, look, I got the same thing when I used a plus 2 or a minus 2. I got the same thing when I used a plus 1 or a minus 1. It must be an even function. It's like, no, it doesn't. must be. It might be, but it isn't. This one isn't. So it's important not to draw conclusions based only on that. And the reason I want to belabor this is because it's one of the more common mistakes that I, that I see out there is I put a question on a test or whatever, and I say, hey, uh, demonstrate that this is either an even or an odd function or maybe neither and they'll say well look i plugged in this point this point this point this point yeah it's even it's like you haven't proved it you have not demonstrated it you cannot conclude that okay so i'm trying to make a point here for example is not proof this is wisdom this is wisdom so how are we going to prove it then how do you prove even symmetry well what you have to do, you have to work in terms of x itself. And I, I struggle for a way to say this, but work in terms of a sort of a free, in other words, unspecified or not to be specified until later or whatever you want to call it, unspecified x. Work with an x. Work with an x. Now there's a test for symmetry we can use. And I want to try to sneak you up on it okay so consider this x squared thing which is even we know it's even 
what makes it even? Well, when you plug in a negative 2, or let's, let's start with negative 1. When you plug in a negative 1, you get 1. And when you plug in a positive 1, you get 1. You get the same thing whether you plug in a plus 1 or a minus 1. And if you plug in a negative 2, you get a 4. If you plug in a positive 2, you get a 4. You get the same thing whether you plug in a plus 2 or a minus 2. And it has to work always and forever is the point. It does work for plus 3 and minus 3. You get the same output. And then you have to say for all acceptable inputs. That's called the domain, remember. The set of all acceptable inputs is, is called the domain. You have to show that this is true for all of them. So going point by point is not going to be effective. So let's try to summarize, or let's try to condense what I just said over here. In other words, f of negative 1 is the same as f of positive 1. f of negative 2 is the same as f of positive 2. f of negative 3 is the same as f of positive 3, and so on. In other words, whatever you use for x, whether you use a plus x or a minus x, they're going to be the same for all values of x in the domain. This becomes our test for symmetry. Now, usually people don't put the positive there because that's kind of redundant, right? But uh, f of negative... Whoa. What am I doing? What am I doing? Stop. Okay. Test for even symmetry. If you can show that f of negative x is always the same as f of x, you have proven, this counts as proof of symmetry, and therefore we call it our test for even, for even symmetry. So how does that test look in practice? Well, here's my function f of x. Now I know this one's going to be even, but let me show you what the test looks like. You have to figure out what is f of negative x. So you do that. How do you do that? You plug in negative x. Notice that when you plug in negative x, since it's being squared, it's just, you know, it's the same as x squared. This is the same as what you started with. f of negative x is the same as f of positive x. They're both equal to x squared. It's the same. Therefore, three, three dots in a triangle means therefore, it is an even function. You have proven it by doing this little test for symmetry, by applying this test. Find f of negative x. And if it looks the same, I did f of negative x. It looks like this. That's the same as what we started with. If it looks the same as what you started with, you have proven that it is an even function. Let me get rid of some of this goop. It starts to look a little busy after a while. I'm going to prove that this one's even. How? Well, what you do is you say, okay, let me plug in a negative x. Again, I'm not using particular numbers. I'm using negative x. So I would come into this function here. I'd plug a negative x into my absolute values. And then I would simplify. So here's the nice part. When you take the absolute value of a negative, it's the same thing as if you took the absolute value of the positive, right? It's the same. And then you can compare. This is what I get. This is what I started with. They're the same. And since they are the same, I can conclude I have proven this is indeed an even function. So, again, we can't, you don't want to just use particular numbers. Particular numbers are helpful if you want to, you know, kind of prove to yourself, yeah, I think it's even. But to prove that it is even, you have to work in terms of x. Now, this one, actually, this is the same one we did before, right? This one was not even. <laughs> so, this one's going to fail the test. Let's see what happens. So I take my negative x, plug it in using parentheses, minus 5 times. I take my negative x, plug it in using parentheses, okay. Plus 4, take my negative x, plug it in using parentheses, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so that means that h of negative x is. Now when you take a negative to the fifth power, it's going to be negative. Be careful here. Now, in, in this particular case, this doesn't make a difference. It, you know, some people would do this. They would say, oh, a negative times a negative is a positive. That's actually, you don't want to do that because sometimes you'll be wrong. You have to do the exponent first. Now, it turns out negative x when you cube it is going to be, pardon me, what happened there? 
Go on, you. Is going to be a negative x cubed, right? When you cube a negative, it's negative. Uh, so it, it is going to end up going positive, but that's kind of coincidence. I mean, if that was squared or something, this would end up being a positive in here, right? So you got to be careful about your order of operations, is what I'm trying to say. <clears throat> Where were we? We were looking for blue, that's what we were doing. So anyway, this is plus 4 times minus x, that really is this, plus this. So what have I got here? I've got uh, a negative x to the fifth. This is becoming a plus 5x cubed and a minus 4x plus a 3. So what i got to do now is i got to take this result and compare it to what I started with and say, are those the same? Those are not the same. Those are not the same. Not the same, therefore we have actually proven that it is not an even function. Okay, so the moral of this story, going back to the Yiddish proverb, for example is not proof. If you want to prove that it's an even function, you can't just use a few numbers and say, yeah, it worked. It doesn't work that way. You have to do it this way. You have to use this official test for symmetry. You work in terms of a plus x minus x. If f of negative x comes out to be the same as what f of x was, then you have proven that it's an even function because you haven't said what x is. x is free to be whatever you want. You can say, oh, that, that would have been true if I used x equals a million or a jillion or whatever. It would have worked all the same. It always works the same. Okay. Whew. Let's do some odd functions now. Two kinds of functions to look at. Now you know what evens are. What are odds? Odd functions. There are the ones that exhibit symmetry, and there's different ways of saying it. You could say through the origin. You could say rotated 180 degrees around the origin. Okay, a perfect example of something with odd symmetry is, guess what, f of x equals x cubed. And the good news is we've seen this function before. Haven't we? I hope so. So if you plug in something like a negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and a 2, what's happening? Negative 2, when you cube it, you get a negative 8. Negative 1, 0, 1, and 8. 8. So when you go to graph this thing, and I don't know if I want to go all the way to 8 here. Oh boy. I guess I can, just for fun. So when x is negative 2, I'm way down here at negative 8. When x is negative 1, I'm here. Then I'm at 0, then I'm at 1, 1. That's a point, that's a point. And then 2 comma 8 is like way up here someplace. Remember this is kind of like a I don't know what you want to call this, a pinwheel, a propeller, or something like that. It is momentarily horizontal at the origin. But that's what that function looks like. So, it's got a certain kind of symmetry to it, right? How would you describe this symmetry? You could say through the origin. What do you mean? See this point here? If you go through the origin, you end up here. In other words, you say, I go this distance to the origin, and then I go the same distance to the other side, and I end up here. Same thing with this point. I go a certain distance to get to the origin, and then you keep going the same way, the same distance to the other side, and you should get to this point. That's what it means, symmetry through the origin. You could, if you want, say it this way. Rotate 180 around the origin. Stick a thumbtack right there. Now take this part and spin it around on the thumbtack by 180 degrees and can you kind of see how you'll end up with this part down here? It's like a spinner. Spin it halfway around. You have to put the thumbtack right on the origin but then you spin it halfway around. There's actually another way you could say it too. You could say doubly reflected. In other words over the y-axis then over the x-axis. So you take this point you reflect it over to here, that's over the y-axis, and then from here you go way down to here over the x-axis. And it doesn't matter which order you go either. You could take this point, go over the x-axis first, and then go over the y-axis, whatever. So you could think of it as a double reflection. You reflect it over the x-axis and you reflect it over the y-axis, one at a time in turn. So there's actually three ways of describing it. Whichever way is your favorite, just kind of remember what that looks like. It looks something like this. And then say, yeah, that's what we mean by an odd function. And by the way, coincidence? 
all of those functions x cubed, x to the fifth, x to the seventh that we looked like that we looked at in the in the last section. Remember, they all had this kind of a an, an effect. They had this kind of end behavior: high here, low here. So that might be why they call them odd functions. I think it's a good guess. I, I've never actually seen that stated before. But. Here's another example of an odd function. Um, Try to remember if we've seen this function before or not. Maybe not. So let me just show you something cool about this function. This is called the reciprocal function because that's what you do with the input. Whatever x is, you flip it over. That's called the reciprocal. So what does that look like when you use specific values? Well, if you were to use like a negative 2 and flip it over, it'd be this. A negative 1 flipped over is this. If you use a negative 1 half and flip it over, it's this. Now if you plug in 0, you're going to have a division by 0. That's called a vertical asymptote. And actually, we're going to see asymptotes officially, um, actually in the lecture after this one, I believe. But if you plug in a 1 half, you're going to get positive 2 and if you plug in a 1 1 and if you plug in a 2 you're gonna get a 1 half. Here's what this thing looks like. Negative 2 I'm at a half. Negative 1 I'm at 1. Negative half I'm at 2. This is called an asymptote. You cannot have x equals 0 in this function because you'll have division by 0. The dashed line shows, hey, don't cross that. You cannot let x equal 0. On the other side, when x is a half, oh, you know what? I did that wrong. Those are supposed to be negatives. Oops. Bummer that I. Let's do this. Come on, you. Redo, 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 redo. I'm putting my asymptote back. Put your asymptote back. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the eraser and say those are supposed to be in negative territory. Negative 2, negative half. Sheesh. Negative 1, negative 1. Sheesh. Negative half, negative 2. Sheesh. And then over here, when x is positive 1 half, we're up at 2. Positive 1. Okay. This is better. It looks kind of like this. It's kind of like someone doing splits. Splits around the origin somehow. And, and actually, it turns out... This is a horizontal asymptote as well. So the function sort of approaches these asymptotes as you go further and further along them. But the key point I want to notice is that this is another nice example of what we would call an odd function. Notice it doesn't go through the origin. Some people expect that it would go through the origin, but it doesn't. But you can see that this point reflects to this point. You go to the origin, and then you keep going the same way in equal distance to get to its sort of a mirror, whatever you want to call it this point you go to the origin go the same distance through the other side and you end up here all these points are reflected through the origin or of course you can certainly look at this as take this stuff put your thumbtack here and spin it around and you get this stuff it's a rotation around the origin or of course you can look at it as double reflecting first reflect it over this axis and then take that and reflect it over that axis right however you want to look at it however you slice it dice it whatever it's an odd function it's a beautiful example of an odd function okay cool now this this one's this one looks ugly but we're going to do it very fast because i'm not going to bother to plug in the points i'll just tell you what you get actually is this the same function we did before no i don't think so no matter what you plug in here or no i shouldn't say that for these values of x that you plug in, you always get a 2 out. Let me make sure I'm right about that. Yep, 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 yep. You always get a 2 out. So if you were to graph this thing, I got 2, I got 2, I got 2, I got 2, I got 2. Can you tell right away it's not an odd function? That's not an odd function. It can't be because it's supposed to, you know, this point would have to get reflected down to here someplace. This point would have to get reflected over to here some point. It's not odd. We can know that with great certainty. It's not an odd function. And so this is kind of that Yiddish proverb again, except I want to extend the statement here. For example, is not proof, but it only takes one counterexample. To, uh, how should I say this, as proof 
to uh, to prove it's not true. <laughs> to it only takes one counterexample to prove it's false or something. Something like that. In other words, to prove that this is not odd. One counterexample was enough. As soon as you had this point and this point, you'd say, hey, that's not reflected through the origin. That's not an odd function. So that's that's actually pretty strong. Um, you might then say, well, is it even function? And again, you can't just use a few points and say, yeah, it must be even, because you don't know that it must be even. You would want to work in terms of a general x. But the question we really need to ask ourselves is, how can we prove that something has odd symmetry. So there's another test for symmetry that we want to talk about here. If you wanted to prove that something was odd, well, let's see now here. Consider x cubed, which is odd function. It's odd because when we plug in negative 1, we get negative 1. And when we plug in positive 1, we get positive 1. When we plug in negative 2, we get negative 8. And when we plug in positive 2, we get positive 8. And when we plug in negative 3, we get negative 27. And when we plug in positive 3, we get positive 27. So you see what's happening here. If I use a plus 3 or a minus 3, I'm getting the same number except one's plus and one's minus. So you get the minus on one end, the plus on the other end. If I plugged in a minus 2 or a plus 2, I'm getting 8 or a plus 8, or a minus 8, like that. So one of the outputs has to be negative, and one of the outputs has to be positive. They have to be the same, but one's positive, one's negative, i.e. To say this a little more briefly, f of negative 1 has to come out to the, not the same thing as f of 1, but the opposite thing as f of 1. This came out to negative 1, this has to come out to the opposite, negative f of negative 2 is the opposite of f of positive 2, right? This was a negative 8. That's the opposite of a positive 8. And so on. This has to be true for all acceptable inputs. So if you if you have a function that only has five inputs, you, you could, I suppose, just show that it's true for all five inputs. But x cubed has an infinite number of inputs, which means you're never going to finish showing that it's true. But we can summarize this by saying if you use a negative value for x versus a positive value for x, you're going to have this negative in front, this negative in front. When you plug in negative x, the value you get is the opposite of when you plugged in a positive x, like this. There's what it looks like. This is our test for odd symmetry. If you can show that this is true, you have proven that it's an odd function. So let's see what this looks like in action. So if you want to prove this, first, as we were doing before, plug in negative x and see what you get. So this simplifies, of course. You take a negative and cube it, it's going to come out negative. So that's what this is. And then you compare it. Well, remember before we compared it to the original function, but that's not quite what we want to do here. We want to compare it to the negative of the original function. So we say, okay, negative f of x would be negative in front of the x cubed, like this. Now you compare this to this, and you say they're the same. Therefore, it really is an odd function. Okay, so you catch the slight, the subtlest difference here. You find f of negative x, which was this, and you compare it not to the original, but you compare it to the, the original with a negative in front. So I had to take this, and I put a negative in front to get this. And then I said, yo, those are the same. f of negative x is the same as negative f of x. That's what we're trying to prove here. OK, that proves it's an odd function. Let's try it with this one. We're expecting this to work, right? So you say g of, well, negative x would be 1 over, and you'd have to put the negative x there. And remember, if you divide something by a negative, you end up with a negative answer. In other words, this negative can just come right out to the front. 
1 over negative 2 is the same as negative half, right? So there's our g of negative x. Now we want to compare it, again, not to the original g of x. We want to compare it to the negative of the original, which means just take the original and put a negative in front of it. Compare this to this, and you say, oh, they are the same. They're the same, therefore we have proven this is an odd function. And maybe one more of these. If I plug in a negative x, what am I going to get? I'm going to have a negative x to the fifth power, minus 5 times. I have a negative x to the cubed power, plus 4 times. I have a negative x plus a 2. So a negative x to the fifth is the same as, well, negative x to the fifth. This is minus 5 times, and when you take a negative and cube it, it's negative. And then this is going to be a negative 4x, this is a plus 2. And so what we end up with here is negative x to the fifth. This is becoming plus 5x cubed minus 4x plus 2. So this is our h of negative x. Again, you don't want to compare it to the original. You want to compare it to the negative of the original. Put a negative in front of all these terms. All these terms switch their signs. That's going to be a negative x to the fifth. It's going to be a plus 5x cubed. It's going to be a minus 4x, and it's going to be a minus 2. So you compare these two things, and you say, are they the same? Negative x to the fifth, negative x to the fifth, plus x, plus x, minus 4 minus 4 Oh, plus 2, minus 2. Oh, it's not a match. Not the same. Therefore, not an odd function. Okay, so that's how this works. It has to be a perfect match. If it ain't a perfect match, forget it. Throw it out the door. Okay, so I've spent these first four pages defining what do we mean by an even function, what do we mean by an odd function, but also explaining how do you test, prove, definitively, this is an even function or this is an odd function or not. I just want to end with a few more examples just to try to help work this in a little better. Let's switch colors maybe. Some further examples. So actually these first four, these are quick and easy, but I just want to make a point. Are the following even, odd, or neither? Well, this one definitely counts as even, right? It has the symmetry over the y-axis. That's definitely even. Now let's, uh, maybe let's skip over to this one. This one, this one, this one, that's not even, but notice how it's kind of got the it's got this effect going. It's kind of like you reflected once and reflected twice. I guess that's the way I like to look at it. Um, or you could think of it as a 180 degree rotation. However you want to look at it, it's definitely an odd function. That is an odd function. All right, so that's the difference between even and odd. One's a reflection across the y-axis. One's, one's kind of like, maybe I'll just write 180 degree rotation around the origin. What about this one? Well, that's certainly got a symmetry to it, doesn't it? It's got a left-right symmetry. Here's the problem. The symmetry is back and forth. The mirror is there. The mirror is not on the y-axis. Therefore, this does not count as even. It does not count as odd, of course. So this is neither. This is neither. So when we're testing for symmetry, we, we are testing for symmetry with respect to the axes, the coordinate axes. That's an important point to keep in mind. So this is a parabola, all right. Parabolas have symmetry, all right. But that is not an even function because the symmetry is not based on the y-axis. This one, you'd say, well, it's got that sort of propeller, rotation, spinner, whatever you want to call it, symmetry, all right. It sure does. But that's not the origin. And since it's not the origin, you can't count that as odd. And it's obviously not even either. So you'd say it's... That's another one of those neithers. Okay, so the symmetry that we're talking about, just to be clear, we are talking about symmetry with respect to the coordinate axes. It's got to be over the y-axis to count as even. It's got to be around the origin to count as odd. Now with these, we'll go back to our old f of negative x kind of trick. So recall that the two tests are, if this is true, it's even. If this is true, it's odd. Notice both of them start the same way. 
find f of negative x. The difference is that for an even function, you compare it to the original. To, to prove it's odd, you compare it to the, the, the minus, the, the opposite of the original, the negative of the original. Okay, so kind of keep those, those things in mind. So either way, I'm starting by finding f of negative x. So up top, I got a negative x being squared. Down the bottom, I got a negative x being squared plus a 1. Okay. Well, if you take a negative and square it, it goes positive. And if you take a negative and square it, it goes positive plus 1. Now, if I compare this to what I started with, they're the same, even. If f of negative x is the same as what you started with, even. Let's look at this one. I want to plug in negative x first. Negative x plus 1 here. This would be a negative x being squared plus 1 here. So this is a negative x plus 1 on top. A negative x when you square it is the same as a positive x squared plus 1. Okay, now compare this to this. It's not the same, right? Not same as the original g of x. And what does that mean? That means it's not even. Okay, switch colors for this now. Question, is this the negative? Oops. Is this the opposite of what we started with? The negative of the g of x that we started with? So take a look at this. Is this the same as this, except I just put a negative in front? Well, if I put a negative in front, I put it way out front, it looks like this. So, okay, I'm asking again, is this the same as this? The answer is no, it's not the same as this. Because if you wanted to put this negative See, this negative, in, it's in the numerator, right? If you wanted this negative to jump up into the numerator, it would actually look like you'd put the negative on the entire numerator like this. And so that's a negative x minus 1. So no, it's not the same as that either. Okay, it's not the same. As, so it's neither. This, this one is a neither. Let's get rid of all that stuff. Nope. So it's not odd. It's not even. It's not odd. It's neither. This one is neither. OK, let's come down to this one. Maybe I'll go in blue just to be different. One more. So we always start by saying, let's look at h of negative x first. So that would be, this would become a negative x plus 1. This would become a negative x minus 1. This would be a negative x being cubed. So that means I get a negative x plus 1. OK, I get a negative x minus 1. OK, down here, a negative cubed is the same as this. OK, so what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to compare this to this and ask if they're the same or opposites. Well, it's kind of hard to tell, I think, just by looking at it. So I want to show you a little little bit of manipulation trick here. Star. What we should do up top. See that negative? I, I always hate starting with a negative. So what you do instead is you factor out a negative 1, which would make this an x minus 1. Okay. Notice if you distribute, you have a negative x plus 1, which is what this is, negative x plus 1. Okay. So pull out the negative 1. Over on this parentheses, pull out a negative 1 here too, and that will leave me with this. Right? Because a negative x and a negative 1, that's what this would be. So do that, and then it's over negative x cubed. Okay. Notice that this negative 1 and this negative 1 cancel. So I've got an x minus 1, and I've got an x plus 1, and I've got over a negative x cubed. And this negative can come right up to the front. So I've got a negative in front of an x minus 1, an x plus 1 over an x cubed. So in other words, kind of clean up your stuff. Kind of take your results and massage them a little bit. Try to simplify them. Make them look good. Okay, this is a good looking result. So this is what my h of negative x is. Now compare that to what we started with, which was this. Is that the same? Nope. But notice that if I did this, 
if I did the net the opposite of this, I'd have a negative in front, and then I'd have an x plus one and an x minus one over an x cubed. Is this the same as this? And the answer is, yeah, it is. I mean, the x minus 1 and the x plus 1 are in reverse order, but that's okay. You can multiply in a different order. It still works. This is the same as the opposite of what we started with. Therefore, we have actually proven that h of x is an odd function. Cool. So we've got some good, healthy algebraic manipulation going on for this one. But... Uh, we have proved definitively it is an odd function, and again, just to just to beat the dead horse a little bit more, you know, you you wouldn't want to just say, well, you know, I'm going to try a couple values here and see what happens, and if it works, you know, for negative two and positive two, if I get the same thing, yeah, it's probably, uh, it's, or if I get the opposite things, I suppose, yeah, it's probably an odd function. Okay, that that doesn't count as proof. You have to work in terms of the x. You have to work just like we did right here. Okay, so there's a nice practice with function notation for us, as well as getting to know two classes of functions that come up quite a bit.